aware of some of what that tragedy was, but not everybody that's listening is aware of those tragedies. And I uh, yeah, don't want you to, like, if it's going to bring up too much pain, but if you would just share with our listeners a little bit about what that tragedy was that kind of got you involved in this, I would appreciate that. Well, I, I'm a mother of four children and sent them all to college as a divorced mom and uh, had one son at Hampton University that was having a Martin Luther King celebration for the students on campus uh, at one of the hotels there. And um, a Navy officer came in, started a fight with one of his student, one of his friends. Uh, my son intervened and put him out. He went to his car, got his gun, and came back and shot him and killed him. Uh, so that took a year and a half of fighting up and down the road, uh, trying to make sure that that young man uh, was uh, tried for murdering my son. And then uh, a year and a half later, uh, another knock on the door in Durham where my my youngest son was in Greensboro at A&T, and he'd had uh, an emotional upset, walked out in the street with no clothes on, and a police officer shot and killed him. Uh, so it was out of tragedy that I ended up here. A lot of prayer, meditation, and fighting for not just my children, but other uh, children as well. And what I saw during that whole chaotic experience was that we were, even then, we were losing a lot of our black and brown children. Yeah, and we still continue to lose a lot of them. And I know that that's just a very important issue to you is ways that we can find to not lose these children on a regular basis because it seems like every time you turn around there's another tragedy with somebody being lost, whether it's at the hands of a police officer or at the hands of uh, their fellow peers or even at the hands of other societies and cultures. But where where did you find the strength to deal with these issues when they first happened to you? Because I, I can't even imagine. I have no kids, but I know if Malik was to call me, my younger brother, and tell me that anything had happened to my nephews, I would be utterly devastated, and I don't know how I would handle it or if I would even be able to handle it. And like I said, he's the one that deals with them on a regular basis. I probably need to deal with them even more than I do, but I was just wondering, but even just knowing that, because they're my uh, blood in the sense of my, my brother's kids and everything, I don't even know how I would handle that. So how were you, where, where were you, where did you find the inner strength to deal with that? Um, you know, Mark, the only thing I can tell you is only by the grace of God. Because when I wanted to drive my car off the side of the road, and literally that was what was uh, present to me at that moment, and the other side of my brain said, you can do that if you want, but you're not going to die because I have work for you to do. So I didn't drive off the side of the road. I drove on down the road from Greensboro, and I've been, I have been working ever since because what was there was okay my kid those my two boys beautiful boys are gone i can't bring them back no matter how hard i fight but there are a lot of other young people out here that i can fight for a lot of seniors that need me to stand for them so my life is is really about i told somebody the other day that i i wake up in the morning and i strap up let's go well what is, the, what is it that we need to fight for? What's the issue? What is the policy? What is it that we need to stand for today so that people have a little bit better life? And uh, there's so many issues that are going on in society, in particular around Durham, but around the nation as well. And I was just wondering, what are some of those issues that are really driving you right now? Because I know a lot of people – right here in Durham are talking about, you know, things like gentrification, which is definitely an issue, not just here, but in New Jersey, in places like Seattle, in places throughout the area. But that's just one of many. I know a lot of people are also not that thrilled 
with the uh, school to prison pipeline that we seem to be having going on right now. But what are some of the issues that are really touching you on a regular basis that are some, some of those issues that you feel driven to fight for on a regular basis? Well, gun violence is always going to be that snatches at my heart. You know, when somebody takes a gun and shoots, takes the life of someone, it not just impacts that particular uh, in, uh, mother or father or mother and father, it impacts the siblings that we don't talk a lot about. It impacts the the community. It impacts the kids that they go to school with. So there are a lot of victims out of from one shooting. So those are some of that's one of the things um, that people be paid a, a, a wage that they can live. They can't live in Durham. You can't live on fifteen dollars an hour. You can't live on eight dollars an hour. Affordable housing. Where are you going to live? When the medium income in Durham is, I think I heard the other day, was is, is around fifty fifty five thousand dollars a year. We still have a lot of people that don't make that much money, so they end up in the gap that we provide for as from the county is social services, and there are people that will say they are pulling on the system. Well. We don't want them to pull on the system. We want them to have adequate income um, so that they can provide for themselves. We do with the Durham Durham Tech. We have an awful lot of training programs and educational programs where they can go and get a certification so that they can work and make more than $8 an hour. But I can't imagine, I can't imagine living off of $8 an hour. Yeah, I mean, I find it's really hard to – and I'm also amazed at how much, even in whether it's Durham, whether it's New York City, whether it's Miami or other parts of the country, how we – you know, this is 2019, and we still seem to have an issue with folks having, as you just said, places to stay. Because I've got a friend of mine, and we've actually had him on the show before, that was on the verge of being evicted from his apartment complex, and he's had some people doing some work. But even now, he's almost on like a day-to-day kind of basis of trying to survive and trying to figure out a way to make uh, ends meet in order to pay his bills. And I've run a couple, a couple of people even near here where I live near, uh, well, I live in Duke Manor, but near the Duke campus and everything. And there are people that I see on a regular basis that are telling me that, you know, they're homeless, might be living on a bridge, living underneath, uh, on some of our church grounds and things of that nature. And it just seems that that's just so crazy for that to be happening in 2019. I mean, it's, was probably crazy really, for it to be happening it, way back when, but but for folks to be telling me these kind of things, I just wondering how what can we do to address these issues, and what are some of your thoughts on like the housing crisis and some of the things that are going on? I know that there have been some plans that are put out by like the mayor of Durham and others about trying to make sure that we have affordable housing, but I don't know what that I don't know what impact that will have until we build those things for those people that are facing the struggles now, because like I know we've got that grounds that will be built. Soon at the bus terminal, but that's going to be what another two years from now. If we're lucky, nothing happens fast. Not fast enough. Uh, people need housing right now. We just the county, Durham County, just passed and we just uh, secured contractors for the 300 block and the 500 block of Main Street to build affordable and workforce housing. Now, that doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, we would love, I would love for it to happen, show up in in 30 to 60 days. But there's no way it's going to happen. It it takes planning and it takes, it's a process. So, in the county, that's not something we normally get involved in with housing because it's usually under the city. But we saw the need, and we had the land, and we wanted to, we took on the possibility of creating uh, affordable housing in those areas. So the city is looking at this bond. Hey guys, want to get rid of more. that cable bill? How- 
I don't know what that was. <laughs> that was the mistake on Dean's part, so keep on going. <laughs> you know, yeah, keep going. I'm sorry about that. We we have, uh, <laughs> you know, trying to improvise over here with no power, and I got all kinds of stuff going on. Pardon that, ma'am. <laughs> so, so the city does most of the housing uh, prospects in, in, in Durham, uh, and we normally, for the county, you know, counties usually take on a soft, services, uh, social services, and the uh, um, health department, um, extension, corporate extension, and um, the sheriff and the jail, not really the sheriff, but the jail process. So we take on a lot of different things in the city, economic development, but we all, we've also combined a lot of things as well. Yeah, and I was wondering about that because I know that in the past there's always been talk about, and I think we might have done it with the school system, but definitely there's been com- conversations for a number of years about, say, trying to merge the county and the city in terms of law enforcement. And it's one that has had uh, that is something that they were definitely interested in, whether our law enforcement is doing. Is that something that you think we should be pushing for? Because I know there's been a conversation where people have talked about, why do we have like the Durham police Thanks, and the players. Durham County Sheriff? Best thing you can do for your both? overall sound. <laughs> Dude, this thing is going crazy over here. Keep going. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> so, the police and the sheriff. So you're looking at two different entities here. The sheriff is elected by the people. We we have no control over the sheriff. That's been really really hard for 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 people to understand. We, as the county elected officials, have no control. The sheriff is the, is the most powerful person, elected person, in your county. The 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 police is hired by the city council. Right. So it's just a totally different um, perspective there. We are responsible as county commissioners. We're responsible for the jail to make sure the jail runs properly and has the resources that it needs. But we do not control the sheriff. And how do you think we're doing in terms of that? Because I know that there have been a number of activists that have talked about the jail system that have complained about Incidences, not just here in Durham, but in Raleigh and other places where inmates have been uh, felt that they did not get enough care or family members felt that they did not get enough care in the state cases where they may have uh, died while under the watch of the prison system or whatever. So you think we do a good enough job in terms of uh, taking care of those that are unfortunately put in that kind of situation, meaning that they're locked up in the jail system? Well, there's always more to do. There's always more to do. You know, uh, if someone's child dies in our jail, I grieve. I'm I'm going to always be with the mom and the the dad. My heart is just going to go there. Just, just, just that's just the way it is. Um, and the question for us is: Are we doing all that we can as elected officials and that provide the resources? for our jail to make sure that they have what they need. Do they have the training? Do they have the facility? Do they have the medical care? All of that we have to look at to see what else we And there have been times where um, there needed to be some things improved, and we've improved on a lot of them, and we will continue to improve on things that the sheriff brings to us that need to be improved upon. Yeah, and I think you all have done an amazing job of friends, not just with you, but with some of the other county commissioners, as well as others that are in different uh, political offices and things of that nature. But um, they're always talking to me about different things that they're are, are concerned about with the county, and definitely the housing has been one that is on people's minds, and also the whole thing with um, controlling which developers come into town. Is that strictly a city issue, or is that something that the county commissioners, through economic uh, development planning, and stuff like that get to put their voices in as well because I'm not sure about that. Okay, I'm not sure what the question was about. The question was how much? 
yeah, economic development, what role the county commissioner plays with that in terms of economic development, not just with throughout the county, but um, in terms of like when we're having conversations with.